This is probably my personal favorite of all the five reasons that I'm going to give you tonight. Reason number three, the best explanation of minds is a mind, capital M, mind, the mind of God. Now, let's just talk here briefly about what the brain is, because we know that the brain and the mind are, are interconnected in such a wonderful and mysterious way. No one denies that the mind and the brain are interre- interrelated and interconnected. They are not, they don't appear to be simul, uh, synonymous, but they are related. And so let's just talk briefly about the complexity of the brain. The human brain is made up of approximately 100 to 200 billion neurons. Every one of those neurons has an average of 7,000 connections, neuronal or dendritic connections. That means that there are then more potential neuronal pathways and connections than there are electrons in the universe. Let me just say that again. There are more potential pathways in your brain than there are electrons in the universe. We're told that the number of electrons in the universe, astrophysicists tell us that there are approximately 10 to the 81st power. That's a 10 with 81 zeros behind it. That's the number of electrons in the universe. The number of potential connections in the average human brain is 10 to the 125th power, which is a number that is magnificently larger, exponentially larger than 10 to the 81. It's astonishing. In fact, the human brain is by far the most complex thing that we know of in the universe. Nothing else even comes close. The human brain is just astronomically, literally astronomically complex. But it's not just that the brain is complex. It's that the brain, in some weird, wonderful, woolly way, gives rise to what we call the mind. And the mind is your identity. It's your personhood. It's your character. It's your desires. It's your volition. It's you're who you perceive yourself to be. You don't perceive yourself to be a brain located in your skull. You perceive yourself to be a person with dreams and hopes and fears and ambitions and all of that. Einstein famously said regarding the nature of the universe and of the human mind's ability to apprehend the universe nature, he famously said, look, the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. He had several quotes to this effect. Here's another one. The eternal mystery of the world is its comprehensibility. The fact that it is comprehensible is, notice this word shows up here again, it's a miracle. No, 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 no. What does Einstein mean that the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is its comprehensibility? It's this. It's not just that the universe is amazing. It's not just that DNA, whether we go macro and we look at the astrophysical side or we go micro and we look at the DNA side. It's not just that the external world is amazing and fine-tuned and wonderful and symmetrical and awesome. It's not just that. What Einstein is saying, it's not just that the world is amazing, it's that we know it's amazing. Well, how do we know it's amazing? Because we have an organ in our bodies that is sufficiently complex to apprehend that the universe is amazing. Think of it this way. If the highest form of evolved life on Earth was an earthworm, The universe would still be as amazing as it is. Earth would still be as amazing as it is. Sunsets would still be as beautiful as they are. Waterfalls would still be as awesome as they are. And DNA would still contain all of the language that we just talked about a moment ago. And earthworms would be none the wiser. Right? Even if you were more advanced, and we'll talk about this evolutionary idea in a few nights, even if you were as advanced as, say, a horse, which is considerably more advanced Uh, biologically and neurologically than an earthworm, but horses are not aware of the tremendous glory and beauty that we see. No offense to horse lovers out there, by the way. See, what Einstein is saying here is, it's not just that the universe is amazing, it's that we know it's amazing, which means we must have the tools to apprehend the universe and its amazingness and its fundamental nature. The most incomprehensible thing about the universe is its comprehensibility. And Einstein wasn't the only theoretical physicist to note this. This man here, Dr. Eugene Wigner, who won the Nobel Prize, uh, who's a theoretical physicist who I believe won a Nobel Prize as well, he, in some, sometime in the 1960s in physics, notice what he said in a, a very popular essay titled On the Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics. Wigner writes, The enormous usefulness of mathematics is something bordering on the mysterious. There is no rational explanation for it. 
the nature of math and the fact that the language that we formulate captures the laws of physics and allows us to build iPhones, build bridges, put people on the moon, and to build interna you know, international telecommunications networks. He's saying math is telling us something about the world. Our ability to apprehend linguistically math and physics, he's like, man, it's a, it's a, it's a mystery. There is no rational explanation for it, but look at what he says here next. The miracle of the appropriateness of the language of mathematics for the formulation of the laws of physics is a wonderful gift which we neither understand nor deserve. He's making Einstein's point. It's not just that the universe is amazing. It's that we know it's amazing. That we have the tools, the, the intellectual tools, the physical tools, the mathematical tools to assess the universe around us. He says, man, it is absolutely a miracle. Not just that we have a brain, but that we have a mind. Dr. Owen Gingrich, who is himself also an, uh, he's not an astrophysicist, he's an astronomer. He was senior astronomer emeritus at Harvard University, also at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. I mean, the guy, he wrote an amazing book called God's, uh, God's Universe. It's, it's amazing. These are very intelligent people, Right? So again, this isn't a, it's not an intellectual standoff. Who is the smarter person and what do they believe? It's simply the idea that there are very good reasons to believe that there is in fact a God, invisible though he be. Look at what Gingrich says. I am personally persuaded that a super intelligent creator exists beyond and within the cosmos and that the rich context of congeniality shown by our universe permitting and encouraging the Existence of self-conscious life, that's the key, is a part of the creator's design and purpose. He said, it's not just that the universe is amazing, it's that, it's that this is the kind of universe that gives rise to life that then becomes aware that this is an amazing universe. Einstein says, that's amazing. Wigner says, it's a gift that we neither understand nor deserve. And Gingrich goes that one step further, and he says, like Anthony Flew did when he looked at the biological realm, when he looked at DNA... Gingrich looks at the stars and says, you know what I think it is? I think it's a super intelligent creator. Again, senior professor emeritus at Harvard and of the Astro, uh, Astronomical Observatory at the Smithsonian. Not a stupid person. Somebody who says, I think, I think it's God. I think God's out there. I think God wired the universe, both in the macro and in the micro, for us to find his fingerprints and his footprints if we would but look for them. It's not just that the universe is astonishing, beautiful, and unlikely. It's that we know it's astonishing, beautiful, and highly unlikely. The psalmist tapped into this long before the Hubble telescope was invented. Long before we knew the things that Wigner and Einstein and Gingrich knew, the psalmist wrote in Psalm 8, uh, verses 3 and 4, When I consider, when I think, when I cogitate, when I reflect, when I ruminate, when I think about what? What is it that you're thinking about, Mr. Psalmist? When I consider your heavens, the starry skies, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, all I can think is, what is mankind that you are mindful of him and human beings that you care for them? Absolutely amazing that the universe is just beautiful, it's vast, it's exceedingly unlikely. And yet here we are, aware that the universe is vast and beautiful and exceedingly unlikely. 